everyone welcome to the course design practice i am sanjay kumar course ta for this course and on behalf of professor shantanu bhattacharya i will taking few lecture modules for this course in the past week you have already learned concurrent engineering in detail and in the present module 26 and 27 i will discuss a new topic called material selection in engineering design okay this topic is very important um, topic for the design purpose for example if you want to convert your idea into your practical uh, product then what you will do you will require a material to fabricate it okay so uh, you know that in universe we have a variety of materials are available so to choose a appropriate material for your particular product there are some process is needed so the, in this module you will learn these things so in the, that this kind of things we will discuss in uh, we will discuss in our coming module okay and the structure of this module is following uh, first we will study some engineering materials and properties then their classification of some materials then again general property of materials then since uh, in this module we will focus only on mechanical aspect of designing so we will uh, study some in brief uh, mechanical properties such as uh, for example stress strain diagram and etc and uh, after that we will uh, study material selection process okay now material classification okay in this uh, you we know that there are a variety of materials available in our universe universe and these are broadly classified in these groups metals polymers ceramics glasses elastomers hybrids okay metals metals are generally in crystal uh, crystalline in nature uh, and the atoms of the metals are held together by metallic bonding these Uh, metals are very strong and hard and some materials are ductile some materials are very brittle in nature and we will uh, we will uh, study these things in detail in come in next uh, uh, slide okay now ceramic ceramics are also it may be crystalline or non crystalline and he, here molecules are bonded with uh, ionic or covalent bond okay ceramics are very higher strength possess very higher strength while in compression okay ceramics are uh, generally brittle in nature so when you will apply a tension in these metal so there will be a, uh, it will fracture immediate, uh, immediately compared to in comparison to metal a fracture will take place in uh, a very early time so uh, and uh, these met also these materials are electrically insulate chemical inert etc polymers polymers it is <coughs> it is made with many repeating mers to form very large molecule and molecules are bonded with covalent bonding molecules and several elements are present in polymers 
such as oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc. Polymers are generally inductile in nature and now elastomer. Elastomer is also in a, it is a uh, polymer with visco elasticity. Elastomers are generally very weak. their intermolecular forces are very weak elastomers you can take example of rubber for met metals we have a variety of metals available in our universe such as aluminum iron bronze etcetera. Now, materials are discovered, uh, variety of materials are discovered with a time. Okay. So, we, uh, we can see from in this table uh, that uh, variety of materials gold, copper, bronze, iron uh, and their advent a uh, time is mentioned here. So, in stone age that is the 10,000 BC and here some materials were discovered that was the ceramic, wood, skin, fibers, woods and stone were used as a for uh, their armory and in, in a bronze age, bronze area that is the time period between 4000 to 1000 BC, here bronze were developed, discovered. In iron age, iron age lies between 1000 to 1620 BC and here you can say irons, cast iron and some natural glue from the tree was discovered. And uh, in cast iron was first for was dominant in 1620s, and we uh, but you can see from this plot that the, these materials, the use of these materials continuously decreased uh, with the time, and uh, and uh, as well as the new materials was discovered at a span of a time, a span of time time. Okay, see and see we can see that in 1850 steel was discovered steel it is uh, another form of of iron purified form you can say now after that from the 1940s 60s now uh, people approaches towards the light alloy lighter alloy hybrid alloy hybrid alloy it consists of uh, two or more materials these materials are light uh, the main properties of these materials are light in weight and higher strength And from the past few decades, we can see that there the, the use of polymer based materials has increased enormously as well as composites and ceramics. Okay. But a comparison with metals, the polymer, the use of increased at higher pace.
Okay. From this chart we can see that there are a lot of materials are available to design a any any uh, component of a system or is um, or, or you want to uh, or a machine something like that. So, we have a variety of choice. So, in uh, in these materials each material have a some specific property some specific quality and some uh, disadvantages also, but to choose a, a proper material from this chart it is a very difficult for a design <coughs> engineer to which material will be suitable for our our product. Okay. So, criteria 1, we can choose or select material on the basis of properties of materials. Okay. What are the properties? They are each material possesses physical properties, chemical properties, thermal, mechanical, electrical, optical et, uh, properties, etcetera. Okay. So, physical property, first we will discuss physical properties of a material. Physical property describes the state of material which is observable or measurable. You can check property, physical property of any material by your naked eye. Density, melting point, boiling point, etcetera are the some of the commonly known physical property. Suppose that density, what is the density? Density of any material can be uh, defined as mass per unit volume. Okay. And <coughs> amount of the mass content by unit volume of the material. If any material has a, suppose that iron, iron has a higher density than aluminum. It means, if you fabricate something using iron, that weight will be higher. <coughs> so, suppose that if you take a um, constraint that uh, material uh, uh, must be part should be li uh, lighter in weight. So, you will have to choose very intelligently which material will be uh, will be suitable for your product. Okay. Melting point, melting point, melting point is the temperature at which the material changes its state from solid to liquid. Okay. For example, iron has a melting point. of about 15 30 degree Celsius, okay. while aluminum has a melting point around 660 degree Celsius. So, you can see that at 660 degree Celsius aluminum will get melt melted away. at 6 degree Celsius, while at 660 degree Celsius iron will be present in solid form. Okay. Boiling point, boiling point is the temperature at which the material changes its states from liquid to gaseous. So, boiling point you know everybody knows that boiling point of water. that is the 100 degree Celsius. It means at 100 degree Celsius liquid will <coughs> start boiling and there will be a, it, it will start converting into gaseous media. These are the main uh, permanent physical property of any material density, melting point, boiling point etcetera. Now, we will talk about thermal property. Every <coughs> each material has thermal property. What is the thermal property? It is a 
thermal property means transfer of heat through media that is the conduction it can be and heat transfer can take place using conduction convection radiation in conduction what happens <coughs> suppose that you ha have a one metal slab of thickness x okay and at this point suppose that here is a one boiler and it emits heat and temperature at this place is T 1 and so what happens one uh, that temperature gets that when heat will get transferred through this slab so at in this way and there will be temperature of T 2. So, if you want to calculate the what will be the heat exact amount of heat transfer then what you uh, it is calculated using Fourier's law of heat conduction that is the Q is equal to K into A into dt by dx ok where K is the thermal conductivity A is the area of the slab and delta T change in temperature and d x is the thickness. Okay. Uh, thermal conductivity, thermal conductivity is a property of material and it defines as a rate at which the heat is conducted through a solid at a steady state. A steady state means time at time constant, time will be constant at a steady state. Okay. And another property yeah, is the in thermal property of any material is the specific heat and specific heat of a material is defined as the quantity of heat energy required to increase the temperature of a unit mass of the material by 1 degree means the amount uh, how much energy is required to increase suppose that one this is your part one sample is there at a temperature 10 degree Celsius and if you are hitting this sample and temperature gets increased to 11 degree Celsius. So, there is a increase in 1 degree Celsius. So, how much heat is required to increase the temperature of sample to the 11 degree Celsius means one difference is net difference is 1 degree Celsius. So, that amount is the specific heat. Another property is the third property is thermal diffusivity and thermal diffusivity it, it is the measures the rate of trans transfer of heat of a material from the hot side to the cold side. It means it signifies the any material how fast it transfer the heat. And it can be calculated as thermal diffusivity is signify as alpha, alpha is equal to k by rho c, where k is the thermal conductivity <laughs> and c is your specific heat of material and rho is the density of the material. So, if you know density of material specific heat and thermal conductivity then you can easily calculate the thermal diffusivity of that particular material. This table shows the some common thermal properties of selected materials and you can see uh, for metals such like, uh, like uh, for example aluminum the specific heat is 0 
for cast iron it is 0 0.11, copper 0 0.092 um, kilo Kelvin, Kelvin per gram into Kelvin. Thermal conductivity if you see the aluminum is 0 0.22 joule per second mm, for cast iron 0 0.06, for zinc 0 0.112. So, um, in comparison what you are getting aluminum thermal conductivity of aluminum is higher than thermal conductivity of cast iron also thermal conductivity of copper is higher <coughs> than these two so it means will conduct heat at faster rate as compared to aluminum and cast iron. Some another ceramic you can say alumina the 0 0.029 for polymer, polymers are very poor in uh, heat conducting, uh, these are the very Now, some uh, other properties of material is that optical property. And optical property it depends on wavelength and types of material another parameter which can affect the optical property is the incidence angle suppose that here is your one material and light is coming like this that is the theta i theta is the angle of incidence that is made through the perpendicular to the your uh, material and it is get reflected that is the reflection and that is the transmission incidence ok. So, algebraically insul, uh, incident intensity i i plus i r plus i t will be 1. Some materials are very uh, reflective in uh, nature, some materials are trans tran uh, uh, very poor reflex, uh, very poor reflection. So, these properties are important if you want to design, suppose that microscope, for example, microscopic lens. So, these uh, optical property will play predominant role, but in this um, module we will focus only on our mechanical part, mechanical properties. Okay, so mechanical property this describes the behavior of material in terms of deformation and resistance to deformation under specific mechanical loading condition. Okay, and they are the various properties of uh, comes under mechanical property that is a strength, strength, yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, fracture strength, ductility, Young's modulus, poison ratio, hardness. <coughs> we will study in detail in these things in coming slide. Okay. First, we will start from the stress strain diagram. Okay. Here, what we are doing we have we take one bar solid bar of length l okay l not sorry initial length is l not and an axial force f is applied on both side okay and there is a that is the called tensile loading 
tensile load is applied on both side axially and what happens after some times when load is applied the material which stretched axial and length is increased you can say that there is a increase in length due to the tensile load ok and for that and corresponding uh, changes in displacement by using your uh, load one plot is generated in machine that is the ten in <coughs> tensile machine here you can see that there are the various points in this plot a b y c d e and each point has uh, some significance ok so we will discuss point by point generally stress has a unit of Newton per meter square and strain and the versus strain ok here O A that is called proportionality limit means when you will apply a load on a bar <coughs> so the length will increase axially but after uh, 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 stop suppose that you, uh, after removing of this load f so what will happen again this distance it's a just like a spring in nature this deflection will again uh, made, uh, bar will come into its original position it will return back ok up to that point O A and this point follows the Hooke's law it is a linear in nature it means suppose that if you are applying a load and deflection uh, elongation takes place so low and up to this point ok and this point is somewhere between before the point A and after stop uh, applying the load what will happen the load will follow the same path and it will come sit at origin ok it is origin O O dash so O suppose that it will O and this point is O dash so it will come from O dash to O that is the proportionality limit and for B up to point B that is the elastic limit means <coughs> after uh, removal of load applied load what will happen it will again material length of material will come to its original position <coughs> but it will not follow Hooke's law ok so up to this point B these are the elastic elastic region ok so if you are applying a load on a any material uh, this uh, diagram is for mild steel every material will have a different kind of stress strain diagram <coughs> for um, in in case of mild steel you suppose that if you are applying a load somewhere up to somewhere this one so what will happen after removal of load material will come into its original position ok so that is the elastic region <coughs> so there is another point that is called y y the location of y can be traced from that like that you just take a 0.2 percent distance suppose that this is the strain 
stress and parallel to OA and wherever it will <coughs> intersect that point is the yield point. Okay. So, this is 0 0.2 percent of the strain and yield strength can be defined as stress at which material begins to plastically deform. <coughs> it means from there that, that is called y is the upper yield point and c is the lower yield point and from c we can see that the stress value is seen to be rise again from point c here by um, and from material is so actually what happens from beyond c there is material is getting strain hardened this region it means load beyond y elongation occurs at much faster rate you can see that there is a small change in st uh, strain the value of stress is very high okay suppose that you are taking this much strain here in um, from y to d region in y to d region in a small deflection uh, elongation the change in stress is high so that means elongation occurs at very much faster rate and after reaching point d after reaching point d what happens making uh, the shape of the bar gets start changing like that you can say that necking takes place necking necking formation starts from point d and this point is called ultimate tensile strength it can be defined as the proper uh, strength of any material up to which the material can sustain their shape in in a plastic deformation okay <coughs> and if you are continuously elongation is uh, uh, you are applying load then what will happen the stress sudden uh, stiff fall in stress <coughs> beyond point D means <coughs> necking will take place uh, and there is cross sectional area at, we, uh, at place where fracture will take place it gets reduced and so that up to at point E fracture will take place. So, okay. so main motto of this study uh, stress strain diagram is that ki what suppose that if you want to design something uh, and uh, for a suppose that you are making a beam for a bridge. Okay. So, you will have to consider each materials ultimate tensile uh, ultimate strength so that up to up to which that material can sustain itself otherwise what will happen if you will suppose that if you have chosen something uh, material which have a which cannot sustain much load so that what will happen fracture will take place. Okay. So, there is another term which 
comes in stress strain diagram that is called st engineering stress strain and true stress strain. There is a difference between engineering stress strain and true stress strain. Okay. First, engineering stress strain. First, I will discuss engineering stress strain. Actually, what happens during calculation of stress is what? Engineering stress. can be defined as force that is applied <coughs> in axial direction to the cross sectional area of the beam here that is the cross sectional area of is A naught <coughs> and force is F. So, engineering stress is that is the A naught is original cross sectional area before applied any load and engineering strain defined as change in length <coughs> due to applied load divided by original length. So, what is the change in length? Suppose that first one bar length is L naught and after applied load length for particular load at a particular load length is L. So, change in length will be L no minus L naught divided by L naught is the L naught minus 1 where L is equal to length at any point during the elongation. So, Hooke's law of linearity for up to the power for point O A, what will happen? stress is directly proportional to strain and E to E, where E is the modulus of elasticity. Actually, it is a measure of <coughs> the inherent stiffness of material. Now, we will study true stress strain relation. What is the true stress? It is the ratio of force per unit area that is the actual area means for a particular load F length is increased to L and cross sectional area is changed to A. Okay. So, that is sigma is equal to F by A, A is the actual area at particular load and true strain true strain is equal to since uh, deformation elongation takes place continu in continuously uh, on apl apl applying of load. So, we can write that using same thing change in length divided by original length. So, suppose that first uh, 
initial length was L naught and final length is L at particular load and change in length what is D L and initial and if you will solve log L by L naught. So, if we substitute the value of L naught from here, so what will happen? 1 plus E, this is the relation between true st strain versus and engineering strain means 2 strain is equal to L n 1 plus engineering strain. Similarly, we can drive an expression for two is, uh, stress versus engineering stress. Okay. Now, I will discuss some more mechanical properties like ductility or ductility that is the ability of a material to plastically deform without failure. Okay. And if you want to quantify ductility, then you will have to measure either percentage elongation or area reduction. What is the percentage elongation? It is the ratio of difference between final length uh, minus L naught divided by L naught, where L f is equal to length of a specimen at fracture. What happens? Initially, length initial length is L naught. So, after fracture L f after fracture just joined both <coughs> part and measure the length of actual uh, length of that specimen. So, that is the length of specimen at fracture. So, from here this formula you can calculate the elong percentage elongation of that specimen. Another is area reduction. Again this is initial cross sectional area minus cross sectional area of specimen after fracture divided by original cross sectional area. So, first suppose that cross sectional area was A naught and now cross sectional area is A f. So, after measuring the cross sectional area of the actual cross sectional area after fracture of that specimen, you can calculate area reduction. So, these both terms defines the ductility of any material. Now, other property is hardness of the material, hardness it is the resistance of material against abrasion or indentation. Generally hard uh, rock well and 
ब्रिनेल टेस्ट आर यूज फॉर हार्डनेस टेस्टिंग नाउ द टफनेस इट मेजर्स द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ ए मेटेरियल टू द प्रोपागेशन ऑफ ए क्रैक so these are the some mechanical properties which are very uh, important uh, during the consideration of selection of material now we will do some problem solve solving example okay here you can see that what problem statement is that a tensile test uses a test specimen that has a gauge length of 50 mm and an area of 20 mm square that is a cross sectional area during the test The specimen yields under a load of 98,000 newton. The corresponding gauge length is equal to 50.23 mm. This is the 0.2 percent yield point. Okay. The maximum load is uh, 168,000 newton. That is reached at gauge length of 64.2 mm. So determine yield strength, modulus of elasticity, and tensile strength. <coughs> so what are the things given? Given that gauge length of 50 mm, L not is equal to 50 mm, A not is equal to 200 mm square. Yield Y is equal to Means, specimen yields under a load of ninety-eight thousand newton. So, if you want to calculate yield strength, what this uh, yielding correspond load correspond to yielding point? That is the ninety-eight thousand. Newton and the cross-sectional area of the specimen is 200 mm square. So that will be 490 mega pascal, or is equal to Newton. Either you can write Newton per mm square. Okay. Now, modulus of elasticity. Modulus of elasticity we can calculate by Hooke's law. What it states? Yield strength y is equal to Young's modulus into strain. This one. So e is equal to y by e. So what is the strain? So first we'll see. Original gauge length was 50 mm. Corresponding gauge length is 50.23 mm, and there is a 0.2 percent yield point. Earlier, I had discussed for yield point, there is a one parallel line is calculated. So, 0.2 percent that is the yield point. Zero point two percent. Okay, so if you calculate the strain, the change in length will be fifty point two three minus fifty, and original length so in this case, original what will be original length? Actually, we omitted this that amount of strain. Uh, zero uh, uh, for we consider taken we take 
0 0.2 percent strain for uh, locating the yield point. So, we will have to take consider of that thing. So, 50 minus 0 0.002 2 percent ok on calculating that will be 0 0.0026 ok. Now, Young's modulus E will be yield strength is 490 and strain is 00, 0 0.0026 that will be equal to 188.5 into 10 to the power 3 mega Pascal. Now, we will calculate tensile strength. So, tensile strength of any material that is, is equal to sorry load corresponds to ultimate point divided by area of a specimen that would be equal to area of specimen is 200 840 mega Pascal that is the tensile strength ok. In next problem again what saying in previous problem the determine the percent elongation if the specimen neck to an area 92 mm is square determine the percent reduction in area. So, we will use same data 50 mm uh, gauge length cross sectional area 200 mm square and on basis of that we will calculate percentage elongation. percentage elongation was the length at fracture after fracture minus initial gauge length divided by L naught. Here and up to maximum 64.2 mm not fracture you can say ultimate strength 64.2 given minus 50 divided by 50 that is equal to means this material can elongate 28.4 percent without any failure area reduction. again initial cross section area minus uh, area at actual cross section area minus divided by a naught that is equal to it was earlier 200 minus specific neck to n neck 92 means 92 divided by 200 that is equal to 0 0.54 in percentage you can write 54 percent. Uh, till now you have already learned the various properties for example, mechanical properties, physical property, electrical properties, thermal properties as well as optical properties. Okay. This, these properties you, you are very useful while, while selection in a, of material in your design purpose. Okay. Now, I am closing this module 26 and 27 and the in coming next module I will uh, discuss about what are the steps involved in the selection of a material. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.